Hi everybody, welcome to Miss Adams Teaches Poetry. In this video, we're going to be looking at one of Alice Walker's poems called Poem at 39. This is an autobiographical poem where she reflects upon her late father and how he, as such a hard-working man, inspired her to be the person she is today. Her father was a tenant farmer, which basically meant that he worked incredibly hard, but not for his own land. Um, so he was working for the benefit of others. He lived through poverty, hardship, discrimination, injustice, and he wanted Alice Walker to have a better life. And that's what this poem is exploring. We're going to have a little look at obviously the content, but language, structure and form as well to get you ready for your exams. Let's get started. So starting off with the title, firstly, apologies, because it should be poem at 39 written out. I don't know why this particular copy has 39 in numbers other than laziness. But let's start here. So poem at 39. This is a moment where we understand this. The, this is an autobiographical um, poem. Uh, it is literally Alice Walker at the age of 39 reflecting on what has made her the person she is today and that is her father so it's reflecting on memories of her father and i think the fact that it's at 39 is that this is very much a kind of adult <laughs> age the year before you turn 40 there's sort of no going back here you know you're you're, you're definitely sort of into middle aged um and so uh it's a kind of perfect time to sort of compare herself i suppose to her father as perhaps she remembered him at 39. So let's start with the opening of the poem. How I miss my father. So this declarative sentence is full of emotion. Um, there is no doubt that there is a kind of sense of love for her father here. And the fact that we've got um, how I miss my father tells us that this is about loss and grief. We are assuming here that her father um, has died at this point. And then she reflects, I wish he had not been so tired when I was born. Look at the structure, look at the form of this, the way that the enjambement places focus on this phrase, so tired, which suggests the sort of hardship and struggle that her father will have lived through. Note again, you've got this intensifying adverb, so tired, modifying that adjective, when I was born. So you've got this kind of juxtaposition here uh, between age and youth. Yeah, so you've got age, struggle, hardship, and then you've got youth and innocence. But it also tells us that from day dot, she witnessed her father's hardships. Um, so the hardship was from the beginning. She never saw anything else. Now, you might like to look at the kind of simplicity of this stanza. There's no confusing metaphor here. Um, it's it's quite sort of like basic, but that's because it is a, almost like a true reflection of her thoughts. It sounds like her thinking. Part of this comes from the um, largely monosyllabic lexis that she is using here. It's, it's very much just sort of from the heart is what I'd say. Um, she wants people to really understand how she's thinking. It's uncomplicated. Okay, a much um, longer stanza. So, writing deposit slips and checks, I think of him. Okay, so this is very, very kind of practical, yeah? And it is to do with finances. So, thinking of the practical things in life and finances, I think of him. That might be that she thinks of him all the time, even when doing seemingly mundane things. Um, or... It could be, and I think it is, that he is associated with kind of practicality. Um, and that is 
very much uh, backed up with he taught me how so we're getting this idea that he is like her guide he is her mentor but it also shows that financial stability was important yeah because he felt that he needed to teach it to her um this is the form he must have said the way it is done now that's interesting because when she says he must have said that modal verb must suggests that her memory isn't quite accurate yeah she's having to kind of piece things together and think well he definitely taught me this so he, i'm sure he would have said things like this but there is another thing that could be going on here because the word form is associated with writing yeah um as we know because when we study poems we say well what's the form of the poem so i think this has got a double meaning i think it is both that him saying here is the form here is how to open up a bank this is the way you do it in order to look after your finances but there is also a well also there is another form you can express yourself you can express your ideas through writing okay so you might think at the moment mm, miss adams i think that's a bit tenuous but look at the look at the next bit um so expression of ideas okay so look at the next bit and and, it, and it, there'll be more to it i learned to see bits of paper as a way to escape the life he knew so here again bits of paper can mean forms checks etc you know the financial stuff but bits of paper could be stories poems or even just like fragmented ideas yeah so you know alice walker is a massively famous writer so she would have you know been going through life have an idea write it down on a bit of paper save that for later and then look at this as a way to escape um the life he knew so this bit here if it's if it's through this then that becomes a metaphor yeah so writing is a way to escape hardship but also financial stability is a way of escaping hardship because the life he knew is going to be one of poverty one of hardship perhaps one of injustice discrimination so i think both interpretations work in fact i think it's meant to be both yeah it's meant to be he taught me how to be practical but he also showed me the way with writing um, and even in high school had a savings account so here we move back to again the sort of practical nature but look when we're talking about high school we're, we're combining learning and education with finance so this is about being prepared for life okay so very much um an idea about um recollection nostalgia certainly a sense of admiration for her father okay so i will just write this on this side admiration and nostalgia that's the way this is going tone wise okay he taught me so again notice that we've got this repetition yeah we had he taught me how and now another version of he taught okay so again emphasizing his role as like mentor or guide now this is interesting this bit he taught me that telling the truth did not always mean a beating okay now if you think telling the truth is about having a voice yeah saying things that are controversial maybe or just owning up to mistakes so all life lessons here 
so owning up to mistakes, did not always mean a beating. That means that she would have been at times. Now, before you are too upset by that, you know, this is very much a, a sign of the times. It was it was normal practice for a parent to use um, smacking as a punishment. Obviously, it does not happen anymore. So don't get too caught up on the idea of, 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 of him being dreadful and, 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 and violent. The actual point she's making here is that he was fair and he was discriminating. And so, you know, if she owned up to something that, um, you know, she had done wrong, he would listen and he wouldn't always punish. Now, this again might take on um, a sort of bigger message here. Um, this might be about um, the, the, the wider world um, and the idea of truth and struggle. Um, and bearing in mind her, the content of her novels, uh, her work as an activist, she is someone that has told the truth about hardships in the world. And so there is a message here of sometimes it goes well. Sometimes when you put your neck out there, you know, you don't get beat down, you get listened to, okay? But continuing with um, the sort of more personal side of this, she says, though many of my truths, so her values and experiences, though many of my truths must, sorry, there we go, sorry, must have grieved him before the end. So note again that modal verb, yeah, of certainty. And this is a kind of sense, there's a sense of sadness here in that she knows that her truths or her life choices will have grieved him. Note how emotive that verb is before the end and that's of, of his life. So if we're talking about the end of his life, we're imagining her as an adult. So these are about adult choices he wouldn't have understood now if we look at um alice walker's life we could probably assume here that she is talking about her sexuality um and um, and again just like with the kind of reference to the beating we've got to remember that older generations would not have coped well uh, with homosexuality in that time. So she is recognizing that even though, like that he said, tell the truth all the time. And then she says, e you know, my truth, the fact that I was gay um, would have been very, very difficult for him. Now, before this moves into a kind of um, sort of a negative tone, look at the way that she shifts the tone back to that sort of sense of positive um, celebration, yeah? So it's like she doesn't want to get bogged down in the fact that he wouldn't have necessarily approved of her life choices. She wants to remember all of the brilliant things. So we've got the repetition of the opening line, but here the emotion behind it is heightened because, of course, it's an exclamative. And now we move into sort of slightly more personal um, attributes. He cooked like a person dancing in a yoga meditation. I love this. So we've got a simile here. Yeah, he cooked like a person dancing. But we also have this interesting juxtaposition because dancing obviously suggests energy. Yeah. Um, but yoga meditation suggests stillness. So how can that be? It's kind of paradoxical in terms. But really what he's saying is that he got both joy and peace from cooking. Now, we've learned that he would have struggled somewhat with um, some of her truths, um, including potentially her sexuality. But this is quite interesting for a man of his time because this is sort of subverting traditional gender roles. Um, so he took on a role that was more associated with women um, by doing the cooking. And in fact, it's not just that he did it, he loved it. And not only did he love the process, he craved the voluptuous sharing 
of good food. Now, voluptuous is, is used in a slightly different way to normal. Voluptuous normally means sort of like curvy. Um, but in this case, it means like abundance. Oh, sorry, abundance. That's a U. Uh, apologies. <laughs> It means the abundance of food, and it's about the kind of great pleasure. But note the emotive verb craved. Um, so I've written craved instead of verb. It's like this need, yeah, to share. And perhaps that's because he had so little, which tells us that he is, of course, a generous man, yeah? A very generous man, whatever he had, he would give. Whatever he had or could, he would share. And he got great pleasure from it. Now, I look and cook just like him. I love this assonance here, this rhyme, internal rhyme. I look and cook just like him because it is a mirror formation. It's showing their similarities. I love this. Like she's an echo of her father. My brain light. So there's a kind of sense of freedom in this image. Tossing this and that into the pot. So again, it's very kind of casual. Note the sort of vague language used here. This and that. So it, again, it's this idea of freedom. Um, seasoning none of my life the same way twice. Ah, now we get a bit of metaphor, okay? Because we move from food to life, yeah? So this is about having new experiences, yeah? Trying as many new things as she can. Um, and she is happy to feed whoever strays my way. Again, look at that assonance once more. Um, and again, this is a mirror of her father. There might be a little bit of symbolism here. This might be a bit of a metaphor because again, we know that Alice Walker was a, an activist. So the feeding might be um, a metaphor for just helping and that means because the word strays suggests um, being lost so this could be a metaphor for helping the needy and taken literally it means no matter who is around if they need feeding she'll feed them just like her father would okay right final stanza he would have grown to admire the woman I've become. So again, there's a certain, well, there's a certainty, yeah, that he would have made peace with her choices. So even though earlier on you kind of get this sort of, not bitterness, it's not bitter, it's more just regret that he would have found her life choices difficult. But because of the kind of person her father was, she knows that he would have been okay with it in the end. She knows that he would have got there. And note the way this shows that she sort of needs his approval. You know, she still wants to think of him thinking positively about her. And now notice again, we've got to admire the woman I've become. Oh, there's a typo. That should be an A. Sorry. The woman I've become. So this comes back to the title. This is her by the age of 39 thinking, yeah, he would be happy with who I am. And then note this colon. So this is introducing this little list. Okay. Cooking, writing, chopping wood. Notice that they all are the inversion of your verbs. You've, that you've got your gerunds there, which suggests these kind of ongoing actions of her life. But what's interesting if you go back to what uh, we were saying about him subverting gender roles with his cooking, note the way that she is cooking, yeah, which is traditionally feminine, but she's also chopping wood, which is traditionally masculine, yeah, and she is writing, which is, you know, either or. 
So perhaps this is about also mirroring his subversion of stereotypes or gender norms. Um, and she thinks that would make him proud. But this bit, which I think we have to look at as a symbol, is she is staring into the fire. Okay, so it's very, very present. Now, this could be about determination and passion, intensity, you know, like because fires are associated with, you know, that heat and that power. But I do also think that the fire could be hardships, in which case she looks them head on, just like he would have. And she knows that he would be proud of that because that is what he was encouraging her to do. I think this is an apps. I just think this is a wonderful poem. So nostalgic, so full of love um, for her uh, for her father, not her husband, her father. Um, very quick note on form. You will, of course, notice um, that it is in free verse. Uh, you will also notice that it is very conversational in tone, like she's having a conversation uh, with us as the reader. It is very heavy on the enjambement. And I think the reason that this poem is set out in this way is because it's about the idea of fragmented thoughts and that sort of continuous recalling of memory. So it's written as a person thinks. I think that's why it is written um, in free verse. Hope that was helpful for you. If you've got any questions or you'd like to talk to me about um, any of the interpretations that I've suggested to you or challenge any of my interpretations, then do please get in touch. Uh, just um, jot down your thoughts in the comments and I will get back to you. Um, thank you so much for um, watching and annotating along. If this is for your Edexcel IGCSE exam, the very best of luck. Otherwise, thanks from me. Happy revising.